this is Catherine welcoming you to the 2127th edition of the Enfield Talking Newspaper, dateline Thursday, the 14th of December 2017. The readers this week are Roz, Ashley, Romany, Catherine, with Dem on the controls. The editor was Philip, and the production and distribution team are made of made up of Philip and Lindsay. Um, we have a different intro this week. So this year's Christmas music um, is Jingle Bell Swing, as you will have heard. And it was recorded on the 4th of November in 2000 at the Holy Trinity Church in Western Hearts near Baldock. The CD produced featuring carols, etc., to be sung at a glory of Christmas concert at the Albert, Royal Albert Hall uh, presented by the concert promoter Raymond Gubby. Recordings, copyright of Kathleen Shanks and Robin Bester, and used with their permission. The local news stories that we will be reading come from the Enfield Independent and are their copyright. The event's information has been collect collated by us from other sources. The lead story this week, £8 million sprinkler plan for high-rise blocks. But before the news, we have one or two special news items and notices. First, the sunrise and su sunset times for the next two weeks. So that's the weeks of the 14th and the 21st of December, as this will be the last recording before we go away for our Christmas holidays. So sunrise for this week is at 7.59 in the morning, and that goes right through to 8.04 next week. And you'll be pleased to know that the 21st of December, i.e. my birthday, is also the shortest day of the year. So after that, we start moving towards the summer. Sunset times, therefore, go from 15.50, that's 3.50 p.m., right to 3.52 p.m., on my birthday, the 21st of December, and after that, they start getting brighter and brighter, and we head towards the summer. Do get in touch with us to share your own news and special announcements. We love to hear from you. If you have any comments about the Enfield Talking newspaper, please phone Diane de Jersey on 020 8805 6578. She is your listener's representative and will be pleased to help you. Now, Roz will read the first item of local news. £8 million sprinkler plan for the high-rise blocks. Envil Council is to start work in January to install sprinkler systems into its high-rise residential tower blocks. In the early months of next year, all 54 of the council-managed tower blocks will have sprinklers installed... Enfield Council will pay for the work, but is lobbying the council, I apologise the government, to fund the scheme introduced following the Grenfell Tower disaster in June. The scheme is intended to speed up the way in which fires are dealt with in high-rise blocks and will cost in the region of £8 million or £3,000 per property. A total of 71 people lost their lives in the Kensington and Chelsea Grenfell Tower fire. Councillor Ahmet Okenye... Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for Housing and Housing Regeneration said, Although our high-rise blocks are extremely safe, it is sensible and proportionate to install sprinkler systems in them to further reduce the likelihood of a serious fire breakout. The Grenfell Tower shocked the nation and it would be a complete dereliction of our duty for us to do nothing in the aftermath of that terrible tragedy. We have already reviewed fire safety in every single one of our high-rise blocks and even though they are fully compliant with existing fire regulations, we feel it is right and proper to install sprinkler systems to enable more effective firefighting in these blocks and to reassure residents that we take their safety extremely seriously. We're building strong communities and we are demonstrating to residents that we've got their backs and will do what we need to keep them safe. News in brief, by-election results. Labour retained a council seat in the Enfield Highway by-election last week after an increase in votes in its favour. Ergin Erin returned as the elected member for Enfield Highway Ward with a total of 1,619 votes. He de defeated the Conservative Party's Andrew Thorpe, who took 620 votes, and Green Party candidate Andrea Malin, 
on 79 votes. The turnout was 22% with 2,325 votes cast. More bike hangers set for streets as part of a rolling parking programme. <coughs> A council plan to install 15 more secured bike parking hangars on its streets in an effort to get more people travelling by bicycle. This will come in addition to the three newly installed bike hangars at Russell Road, Tottenhall Road and Linbridge Gardens. Bike hangars are covered bike parking units that can accommodate six bicycles and cover one parking space. They protect bicycles from damage and theft. Councillor Daniel Anderson, Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for Environment, said, As part of our plans to, in to help encourage more active travel in Enfield, we're providing secure cycle parking. Our rolling parking programme will see these fabulous bike hangers installed on our streets, particularly around Enfield's new cycling infrastructure. This is an important part of our cycling strategy. People need to be able to park and store their, their bikes safely and conveniently. At the same time, we have been very careful to provide cycle parking that is sympathetic to the look and feel of the surrounding environment. This subtle but significant contribution to our cycling strategy demonstrates Enfield Council's ongoing commitment to making cycling accessible and practical for all. It's about transforming our high streets and town centres and, in turn, improving the health and quality of our residents' lives. Enfield Council offers subsidised spaces for rent at £12 per space per annum with a refundable key deposit of £25. The first bike hanger was installed on Bouvier Road in November 2016. Cycle Enfield promotes active travel and is aiming to create safe and secure cycling routes. People's experience of cycling in Enfield can be found at http colon forward slash forward slash cycling en cycleenfield.co.uk forward slash stories. People wanting to request a space at one of the hangars should go to supplier Cycle Hoops website www.cyclehoop.rentals For further information about cycle parking visit http colon forward slash forward slash cycleenfield.co.uk forward slash cycle hyphen parking True Grit Why Were Roads Not Ready for Snow? An angry Enfield resident claimed that nothing had been done to grit the town's roads on Sunday, despite snow warnings. The resident, who didn't want to be named, says that the 125 bus route was cancelled due to the adverse weather conditions. His anger was fuelled by reports in November that Enfield Council had stockpiled 1,000 tonnes of grit in preparation for such a scenario. The council has defended its gritting plan, saying... The detailed Met Office weather forecast it relies on did not forecast snow. The Met Office weather forecast predicted sleet turning to rain, as a spokesman explained. Enfield Council grits a strategic road network ahead of freezing conditions to keep the borough's strategic routes clear. We rely on detailed daily Met Office weather forecasts, with the forecast for Saturday, 9th of December, indicating the borough would have rain and freezing temperatures causing icy conditions. The Saturday evening forecast for Enfield did not forecast snow, but suggested a low risk of sleet later turning to rain. Based on these forecasts, we carried out an afternoon grit on Saturday, which would keep the network clear of ice ahead of temperatures dropping below zero. However, by 8am on Sunday, when it became apparent the forecast was incorrect and it had started to snow, we ordered an immediate grit of the primary network and carried out three further treatments throughout the day. Though we appreciate that this situation caused some inconvenience, 
By the end of the day, the borough's main routes were substantially clear of snow and traffic could move with care, although side roads and untreated roads were icy and caused problems for some motorists. Details of the Council's winter plan and the routes we grit can be viewed at www.enfield.gov.uk. Transport for London have not responded to the 125 bus route cancellation. How to prevent joint pain flare-ups from cold weather? We're a nation that knows a thing or two about pain, with around 10 million people suffering with arthritis. It's one of the leading causes of disability in the UK. But while the condition is fairly common, it is rarely understood. Arthritis isn't just one single disease, but actually relates to 100 different types of joint pain. And the arrival of cold or wintry weather often causes symptoms to flare up. The good news is there are things that can help manage and perhaps even prevent arthritis-related pain when the temperature drops. Dr Sarah Brewer, Medical Director at HealthSpan, gives us the lowdown on managing arthritis in winter. So what exactly is arthritis? The word arthritis literally means inflammation of a joint, says Dr Brewer. The most common type, osteoarthritis, Arthritis involves degeneration of the articular cartilage protecting the bone ends without a joint. Without cartilage protection, tendons and ligaments have to work harder and severe loss of cartilage can lead to bone rubbing on bone, causing friction and eventual swelling and inflammation. Arthritis can also rear its ugly head when parts of a joint are wrongly identified as a foreign threat and are attacked by immune processes which is the case with rheumatoid arthritis. While far more common in older age groups, anybody can get arthritis. So what are the symptoms? The first sign of osteoarthritis is typically the worst one. Pain in the early stages can feel like a dull ache or a burning sensation. Often you'll feel the pain after you've used the affected joint a lot. For instance, if you've been driving a car or walking up a flight of stairs. Osteoarthritis usually affects the larger joints, such as hips, knees, and the lower back, although the neck, fingers, and toes may also be affected. Rheumatoid arthritis is more likely to affect the whole body and is often associated with severe stiffness. Although the symptoms can be similar for different types of arthritis, a doctor can assess which type you might have by looking at the number and types of joints affected, how symptoms patterns have progressed, as well as the presence or absence of accompanying systematic symptoms. Is arthritis really worse in winter? Cold weather appears to make arthritis pain worse for many people, although the reason is poorly understood, says Dr Brewer, One possibility is that changes in musculoskeletal symptoms are related to falling vitamin D levels during winter, she adds. Another factor could be that pain receptors become more sensitive when surrounding temperatures receptors that detect the cold become far more active. So how can you manage winter flare-ups? When it's cold outside, one of the best ways to keep joints happy is to cover them up. So make sure you're wearing thick layers and keep aching hands warm with gloves. While it's tempting to reach for the medicine cabinet, whenever you feel a twinge or pain, it's best to discuss your pain management needs with your GP or consultant to ensure your symptoms are being managed in the best way possible. Dr Brewer says it might not necessarily be the best choice in the long run. Oral painkillers such as paracetamol are less used nowadays because of long-term side effects. Topical creams and gels that sink in to provide pain relief exactly where it's needed are increasingly more popular. Swimming in a heated pool can also help to soothe painful joints and you can also find quick and easy relief from taking warm baths, according to the Arthritis Foundation. Relaxing in a bubble bath just before bedtime can make the difference between lying awake in pain or drifting off peacefully. Supplements and herbal medicines can also help reduce joint pain, says Dr Brewer, such as glucosamine and codrotin. Hydrolyzed collagen, ginger, turmeric and krill oil all help in the best solution liquid for maximum absorption. 
Students delight as they take prizes. An annual awards ceremony has been held to acknowledge the hard work and achievements of 75 students and apprentices. The College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London, CONEL, hosted the evening at the college's Tottenham Centre on Tuesday, December 5th. Electrical installation student Darnell Pavez, 20, and beauty therapy student Nese Aslan, 31, won the top prize, the Exceptional Performers Excellence Award. Danielle said, I am absolutely shocked to be chosen out of so many students. I really put the time and effort into doing everything properly. My teachers really believed in me and helped me to succeed and prepared me to get a job. Nese Aslan, whose father passed away recently, added, When I completed my course, I told my dad how well I'd done and he was really happy. And I know he would be very proud of me now. I really enjoyed my time at Cornell. There were times when I thought I might give up, my, my, but my teachers were so supportive and I can't thank them all enough. The Paul Head Excellence Award, named after the college's former principal, went to Lucy Musa for her outstanding progress. Lucy said, this means a lot. I've never got a, an award before. I am pleased my teachers have recognized me and with what I have achieved. I've learned a lot at college and on work experience. It's made me more independent and confident. Seven employees were presented with Staff Excellence Awards and five others received the Long Service Award. Employer Excellence Awards, meanwhile, were given to Bria Group, Eagle Nursery, Halo London, Kelly Rail, St Mary's Church of England School, Next Step Support, Price Building Services and Sequence Care Group for the apprenticeships and work placements they offer. Payal Puri, Senior, Health, Senior Human Resources and uh, uh, excuse me, Senior Human Resources Advisor at Sequence Care Group said this award is a great recognition of our partnership with Cornell. We have an excellent working relationship with the college, and the apprenticeship training and service has been excellent. 30 years of volunteering. <clears throat> a woman is nearing 30 years of volunteering at the hospital where her husband passed away in 1988. Irene Fox, 85, started volunteering at the Royal Free Hospital as a way to keep herself busy after her husband, Fred, died aged 61 after developing bronchial cancer. Irene delivers newspapers, snacks and toiletries to patients in the ward for a couple of hours, two afternoons a week. She said, I can't remember who suggested I volunteer here with the charity, but at the beginning it just helped me forget about my problems and focus on something else. Now, nearly 30 years later, I reckon I'm part of the fixtures and fittings at the hospital. I honestly don't know what else I would do if I didn't come here two afternoons a week. Of course, I take holidays and don't come in if I'm not feeling well. But other than that, I'm always here. It's important to me. As long as I'm well enough to carry on doing it, I will. I don't live far away and I often spot people on the ward who I know by sight from my local neighbourhood, even if not by name. It makes me reflect on how lucky I am to still be up and about, and I don't take that for granted. I feel like if I can help, I should. Irene's daughter was a student nurse at the Royal Free Hospital in the 1970s, and her son-in-law a student doctor. She also volunteers for conservation group Heath Hands on Hampstead Heath once a week. Jerry Todd, head of volunteering at the Royal Free Charity, said, Irene is an amazing woman and a real inspiration. We are incredibly proud of her deep connections with the hospital and charity. And this is from the organisation uh, Cleaner Air for London, and it's entitled, Have your say on the Mayor's proposals to help clean up London's dangerously polluted air? We are consulting on the next stage of the Mayor Sadiq Khan's plans to help tackle London's toxic air pollution, which contributes to thousands of early deaths in our city each year. 
From the 8th of April 2019, the Mayor is introducing the Ultra Low Emission Zone, or ULES, in central London, replacing the T-charge with an even tighter emission standard for diesel vehicles. To help further reduce toxic emissions in London, the Mayor is also now proposing to extend these tighter emission standards to the whole of London for lorries, buses and other heavy goods vehicles only in 2020 and expand the ULES for all vehicles including cars, vans, motorbikes and minibuses up to the north and south circular roads in 2021. To have your say, visit tfl.gov.uk forward slash air quality, that's all one word, hyphen consultation or write to us at free post TFL consultations. Consultations end on the 28th of February, 2018. Library open at new site. A library which has reopened at a new site is the latest in the borough to offer improved services to the public. Enfield Highway Library is now on the first floor of the Enfield Business Centre. People who use the library worked with Enfield Council on its design and there are different genres of books to borrow, faster and higher quality computers, twice as many printers as before and a shared catalogue for stock searching. Enfield Highway Library is one of four hub libraries with Edmonton Green, Ordnance Unity Centre and Palmer's Green the others. Councillor Afer Orhan, Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for Education, Children's Services said, I am very proud the new Enfield Highway Library has opened its doors to the public. Our aim was to provide an accessible and cost-effective facility to meet the needs of residents. But what I'm most excited about is the fantastic support we have received from the local community. The Active User Panel has already had some amazing ideas about raising the profile of the library so it can meet its full potential. The panel, along with staff and volunteers, will be working together so it will become an indispensable feature for the community. This is another example of how Enfield Council has been able to meet the changes needs of residents and businesses, which is in turn helping to create an even stronger community and contribute to the area's growth and sustainability. To find out how to volunteer on Enfield Highway Library or other libraries, do visit www.enfield.gov.uk forward slash library volunteering. Sharing knowledge. Four Enfield Primary Schools have been awarded for their teaching of science. Latimer All Saints Church of England Primary School and Lavender Primary won gold at the Primary Science Quality Mark Ceremony at Harper Collins Building, Central London. Hazelberry Primary and Galliard Primary, meanwhile, were given the Silver Award on the same evening. The Primary Science Quality Mark acknowledges that science is recognised as an important subject at each of the schools. Pupils have worked on real-life in investigations, taken part in outdoor learning and shared their newly found knowledge with the community. Trust praised for its work with children. A report has shown that the Royal Free London NHS Foundation Trust is excelling at communication with children and young people. The Care Quality Commission 2016 Children and Young People's Inpatient and Daycare Survey involved 132 acute and specialist NHS trusts nationally. The way in which the trust explained and answered questions about procedures and operations especially drew praise. Helping children and young people understand what medical and nursing staff was telling them also came in for commendation. Improvements were made in giving patients a selection of possible admission dates with the only negative comment being on the availability of hot drinks. Dr. Rahul Chaudhari, a consultant paediatrician with an interest in respiratory medicine and allergy said, children, young people and their families Hospital experience is at the heart of delivery of care. 
This survey shows that children across all of our sites have a good experience during their hospital stay. Communicating well with all of our patients about what they can expect is incredibly important, but especially with young people who may never, been to, never have been to hospital before. We are pleased with our performance, but are committed to acting on feedback provided by families about areas where we can improve. Survey questionnaires by the PICA Institute were sent out in February. The Royal Free Hospital had 139 complete responses out of a possible 496, and Barnet Hospital 181 out of 717. The average trust response rate was 26.2%. Patients could take part in the survey if they had been admitted to hospital as an inpatient or day case and between 15 days and 15 years old when discharged between November the 1st and December the 31st 2016. There were three different questionnaires for different age groups 0 to 7, 8 to 11 and 12 to 15 years. Um, and this is a plea for donations, and it's entitled Green Party Seeks Donations for Refugees. Volunteers from the Enfield and Epping Forest Green Parties are collecting items to distribute to refugees living in France. Donated items can be taken to addresses in Palmer's Green, Forty Hill, Waltham Abbey or Buckhurst Hill. Collection of items will end on Saturday, December the 16th. And then there follow a few addresses underneath for those four areas that we just talked about with a contact person, their address, and the contact telephone number that goes with that person. And this being the Enfield Talking newspaper, I'm only going to read out the information for the two um, collection drop-off points that are do, to do with Enfield residents. And also, um, I suggest that if you are interested and if you don't get this uh, before the cut-off date, which I think is... Saturday, December the 16th, if you get this after, it's always worth um, telephoning the contact person and seeing if they still will take your donation. Um, so we have two contact people and addresses um, for Enfield. The first is in Palmer's Green, and your contact is Bill Linton at 39A Fox Lane. That's N13. Um, his telephone number is 020-3105-18. 9-2, to check if he's in, to arrange a delivery time, or just a general inquiry. And the second address is at 40 Hill, and that's Kate McGeever at 40 Hall Lodge on the 40 Hall Estate. Donations can be left with her in the evening or dropped off to 40 Hill Farm during the day. Her contact number is 07-7790-8100. 287. It's the most wonderful time of year for a beer. Camden Town Brewery is decking the halls and opening the doors of its Enfield Brewery on Saturday the 16th of December to offer Londoners the ultimate festive day out. For just £27, guests can enjoy a bottomless beer brunch created by the Horseshoe Gastro Pub, the birthplace of Camden Town Brewery. The brunch includes a hot dish, such as buttermilk pancakes or skillet-baked eggs with hash, to enjoy alongside croissants and sour bread toast, with jams and spreads. This can also be washed down with endless gallons of gentleman's barista coffee, tea and fresh, coffee or fresh orange juice, and Camden's award-winning beers over a two-hour sitting. Alternatively, guests can order individual items from their menu, such as the full English breakfasts or, of course, Camden's complete beer range. Plus, to help everyone enjoy the festive cheer, Camden Town Brewery is offering a drink on the house to anyone who gets a taxi to the venue. Little visitors are also welcome with their own kids' menu. Beach London will be running a special Christmas version of their Camden Art School workshop from 12pm so little hands can make cards, wrapping paper and decorations while enjoying a festive film, all for free. So anyone who wants to learn more about the beer they are drinking can also book a brewery tour 
running every two hours from midday to 4pm. The brewery bottle shop will also be fully stocked at anyone yet to finish their Christmas shopping. They've got beer hampers and full Camden range in cans and bottles, as well as an exclusive merchandise for Christmas. Tour bookings and table reservations are now open for Saturday the 16th of December, so if you're very interested and you might just get this in time, contact them at www.camdentownbrewery.com. An opportunity to tap into a pool of talent. A recruitment programme to help former professionals who have taken a career break return to work has won a national award. Enfield Council launched its Career Returners at Enfield programme in February and was open to people who had taken a break of 18 months or more from work. At the Personnel Today Awards on Tuesday, the November the 21st at London's Grosvenor sorry, Grosvenor House Hotel, the programme topped the innovation in recruitment category. Councillor Dino Lemonades, uh, Enfield Council's cabinet member for the finance and efficiency, said, we fully appreciate the value and potential of bringing back former professionals to work for the council. This has been a fantastic opportunity to tap into a massive pool of talent and the council has been able to fill posts in, a re in areas where we have traditionally lost out to the private sector. Congratulations to everyone involved and of course we send our best wishes to the six returners who are now back in the workforce. We are extremely proud of these initiative, pr extremely proud of this initiative and look forward to the next phase of recruitment in the, in the new year. There were close to 100 applications for the six month, six month, for the six, six month salaried higher level internships. Although open to both genders, the successful candidates were all women from diverse backgrounds. The council worked in partnership with the consultancy, coaching and network organization, Women Returners. Information is available at http colon forward slash forward slash new dot enfield dot gov dot uk forward slash services slash jobs hyphen and hyphen careers forward slash visit www.womenreturners.com for more information finding the true meaning of christmas with dazzling must-have gadgets lining the shelves and colourful commercials reminding us of all of those presents we still have to buy, it's easy to forget the true meaning of Christmas. But throughout the holiday season, the doors of your local church will be open for you to come and reflect on the real reason for the festivities, the birth of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, the Christmas story unfolds when Mary was visited by an angel called Gabriel, who told her, through the Holy Spirit, she would give birth to a son called Jesus. Whilst heavily pregnant, Mary and her husband Joseph travelled from Nazareth to Bethlehem, where the Messiah was born in a stable because there was no room in the inn. After his birth, a star appeared over the stable, which led the three wise men to him. They came carrying gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. We still give presents to this day in remembrance. Advent is the season that leads up to Christmas Day on December the 25th, starting on the fourth Sunday before the special day. Derived from the Latin word meaning coming, it is both a time of thanks for the gift of Christ to us and anticipation of his second coming. Special lessons are often prescribed for each of the four Sundays in Advent. On Christmas Eve, some churches will have a Christingle service at which the congregation will bring oranges, which are supposed to symbolise the world, decorated with sweets and raisins, etc., which are supposed to represent the fruits of the earth, and a red ribbon, which is supposed to represent the blood of Christ. Many churches will also hold a midnight mass and a special service for Christmas Day. Fantastic news for Borough's growth. 
A network software provider is planning to move to new premises that would have space for the company to employ more people. MetaSwitch's new office development is to be at the Genotin Road car park once planning permission has been secured and detailed terms have been agreed. As part of the development proposals, MetaSwitch has offered the use of the staff car park to the public at weekends. The company's 348 employees currently work out of three buildings near Enfield Chase train station. Councillor Alan Sitkin, Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for Economic Regeneration and Business, said, We are delighted that Metaswitch has taken the decision to remain in Enfield Town and furthermore to expand its operations. We have worked hard to accommodate the company's needs as its requirements have grown and we are extremely happy to help this already successful business flourish further. This really is fantastic news for the borough's growth and sustainability, particularly as we have a proud history of supporting innovators and pioneers of new technology. Enfield is open for business and we welcome opportunities to provide inward investment, employment, a boost to future retail and to help kickstart an evening economy. Evening economy, sorry. We see MetaSwitch's new location as a catalyst for further economic development in the heart of the town centre. Communications software company MetaSwitch powers over 1,000 service provider networks around the world. Ian Ferguson, founder and board member of MetaSwitch, said, Enfield has been home to MetaSwitch for more than three decades. We're a company that remains as committed to our employees and community as we are to our customers and innovation. It's a recipe that continues to turn local employment into global growth at a time when many of our international competitors are consolidating or being acquired. The company has been in Enfield since its founding 37 years ago. Pupils' artwork goes on display. Children's artwork that promotes healthy lifestyles have been put on display outside a new hospital to decorate hoardings until work is completed next autumn. Year 5 pupils from Wilbury Primary School in Enfield drew pictures on the theme of health and the Wilbury School way. Included in the pictures are messages advising people to do more exercise, to eat more fruit and vegetables and to cut back on fizzy drinks and chips. Taylor Schneider... A teacher at Wilbury Primary School said, The children have been very excited about seeing their pictures up on the hoarding. It's brilliant for them to see the results of their hard work, and I think it's made them think about what being healthy is all about. The pupils wore protective hard hats and high-vis jackets at the unveiling of their artwork that Steve Williams, International Health Partners Senior Construction Manager, attended. Mr Williams said, I hope lots of people will stop and look at your pictures as they pass by. They definitely brighten up our building. A manor, excuse me, a banner with artwork from the Enfield Mayor's Award for Visual Arts was unveiled at the same event. And the competition was open to years five and six pupils who go to primary schools all over Enfield, with the winners being announced in April. Some of the parents and winners were at the banner unveiling. Natalie Forrest, Chase Farm Hospital's chief executive, said, It's great to see the children involved with our new hospital. They will be the next generation using the hospital, and hopefully we can even inspire some of them to work here. Vital information and news for your updated Christmas and New Year bin collection dates. In summary, December is two days later than your normal, and January is the next day uh, as opposed to your normal collection day. But for further details, here we go. So for recycling and bin collections over Christmas and New Year, if your collection is usually Monday the 25th of December 2017, it will be Wednesday the 27th of December. Tuesday the 26th of December will then be Thursday the 28th of December. Wednesday the 27th of December will be Friday the 29th. Thursday the 28th of December will be Saturday the 30th of December. Friday the 29th of December will be Sunday the 31st of December. Monday the 1st of January 2018. That will then be on Tuesday the 2nd of January 2018. With Tuesday the 2nd of January being on Wednesday the 3rd of January. 
Wednesday the 3rd of January being on Thursday the 4th of January. Thursday the 4th of January being on Friday the 5th of January. And Friday the 5th of January being on Saturday the 6th of January. Moving on now for, also, for um, additional further recycling needs. Barrowell Green Recycling Centre. Monday the 25th of December as well as 26, Tuesday the 26th of December. Both of these days it will be closed, including as well Monday the 1st of January 2018. Christmas tree recycling. If you receive a garden recycling collection, your tree should not, oh, sorry, excuse me, your tree should be put out for collection with your garden waste as your usual collection day. All decorations, pots and turf must be removed from your tree as these can, cannot be recycled. If your tree is taller than six foot, you will need to cut it into smaller pieces for collection. Until Sunday the 7th of January 2018, tall trees can also be taken to Albany, Albany Park, Arnold's Park, Bromfield Park, Berry Lodge Gardens, Bush Hill Park, Durance Park, Groveland Park, Jubilee Park, Oakwood Park, Pims Park, Tottenhall Sports Ground, Town Park, Trent Park. Trees must be left inside the park gate for collection by staff. After the above date, trees can be taken to Barrowell Green Recycling Centre. An award for organising park volunteers. <clears throat> the chairman of a park friends group has won a national award for his work organising volunteers to keep the park looking at its best. Mark Elul, who is chairman of the Friends of Tatum Park in Enfield, won the Community Champion Award at the annual Fields in Trust Awards 2017. Mark works with Enfield Council on projects to do with Tatum Park, organising volunteers and fundraising. Mr Elul said, I am really in I really enjoyed spending time with fellow people committed to their parks and green spaces. Winning this award has given us added motivation to push forward and make further improvements to the park. The Fields in Trust Award celebrates some of the country's best open spaces, rewarding the efforts and achievements of people who make sure they are of a high standard for public use. Now in their sixth year, the awards president is Prince William, the Duke of Cam Cambridge. Helen Griffiths, chief executive of Fields in Trust, said, On behalf of the team at Fields in Trust, I would like to congratulate all of tonight's winners. These awards give us the opportunity to shine a light on some of the UK's most beautiful green spaces. Despite their undeniable contribution to the happiness and health of our community, Parks and outdoor spaces are often undervalued. This annual event not only gives the public the opportunity to champion their favourite park, but allows us to showcase some of the people and organisations that work tirelessly to ensure the upkeep and community enjoyment of these wonderful spaces. The Friends in Trust charity protects open spaces including sports pitches, children's playgrounds, cycle trails, and country parks. And now um, an advert for one of the musicals, new musicals at the Chicken Shed Theatre, and this is for Rapunzel. Rapunzel, as you've never seen her before, that is. Chicken Shed is delighted to present Rapunzel in a new and exciting version of the well-loved fairy tale. Dark, romantic and life-affirming, this will be a dramatic retelling of a story you thought you knew. Magical, musical and mysterious, Chicken Shed's Rapunzel will dazzle and delight children and adults alike. From the age of five plus, all are welcome. And you can find out more about this uh, performance um, on www.chickenshed.org.uk and the actual performances are from Wednesday the 22nd of November right through to Saturday the 6th of January at various times. Again, you can check on the website. Tickets cost from £10 up to £22.50. Um, again, you can check all the different various ticket prices and exemptions on their website. 
Um, or you could give them a ring at Chicken Shed in Southgate, N14, 4PE. And they've not given us a telephone number, but I'm sure it would be very easy to find out all about them. Well, there are two productions happening at the Millfield Theatre this Christmas. The first is Superheroes and the Lost Fairy Tale. Platinum Performing Arts returned to the Millfield Theatre with another annual urban pantomime. Superheroes and the Lost Fairy Tale will take you on an exciting journey with amazing dance routines that will have you dancing along in your seats. Friday the 5th of January till Sunday the 21st of January, there are various times that must be matinees and evening performances. And tickets are £17.75 for adults, £14.75 for children and concessions. And there's a family ticket of £60, which is based on two adults and two children. And the second production is slightly more traditional. It's Jack and the Beanstalk. From the team that brought you Aladdin, they join them for another year's of giant of all pantomimes, Jack and the Beanstalk. Fee fi fo fum, I smell a pantomime in Edmonton. Yes, I'm sure there'll be plenty, plenty more puns going on there. But complete with magic beans, Millfield audiences can expect a fabulous telling of the infamous tall story, full of laughter, music and dance in North London's biggest family pantomime. The dates are similar to the others. It's Thursday the 23rd of November to Sunday the 21st of December, again with various times of matinees and evening performances. Tickets are £20, concessions of £17, and there's a family ticket, two adults, two young people, at £70. Simple Mind, The Pretenders and Katie Tunstall join together for tour. Global icons, Simple Minds and The Pretenders continue to enjoy outstanding musical journeys and phenomenal worldwide success. They now come together on the same stage for the first time since Live Aid to present a unique opportunity to see both bands as they tour throughout the UK in 2018. Celebrating new albums, Simple Minds and The Pretenders will perform the classic hits that have made them such a distinctive part of our musical heritage, as well as a new material out at outdoor venues all over the UK in 2018. Katie Tunstall is also confirmed to join the tour since taking time out and unleashing her new invigorated album this summer. Katie was searching for the next chapter in her musical career, bringing her unique style and warmth to a legion of loyal fans. She enchants and engages with every song. Katie Tunstall promises to help Simple Minds and the Pretenders grab Grand Slam 2018 by the horns and take fans on a musical journey to remember. A sensational lineup of three unique artists making Grand Slam 2018 the ticket of the year. Simple Minds celebrates the release of their new album, Walk Between Worlds, in February 2018 in advance of the tour and prepare to deliver classic hits and tracks from the new album, Certain to Delight Fans. One of the most successful and influential British bands ever, Simple Minds, have been correct creating their highly influential soundscape for almost 40 years and have achieved six number one albums in the UK. On Grand Slam 2018, audiences will have the opportunity to see, uh, to see and hear Simple Minds revisit the many chapters of their storied career, taking in classic songs like Don't You, Forget About Me, and Alive and Kicking, Promised You a Miracle, and Glittering Prize, Waterfront, and Sanctify Yourself and bringing things right up to date with inclusion of tracks from the new album. When we started Simple Minds, our objective was to be considered uh, as one of the great live bands, a band that had the desire to go all around, all around the world, playing everything and anywhere, sorry, playing everywhere and anywhere, says Jim Kerr. That challenge is going, and we will relish touring all over the UK next summer getting up close to many, so many who have supported us. The Pretenders' latest album, Alone, has recently released to huge acclaim and tracks from the album will be performed on, tour, on the tour together with a catalogue of hits that have shaped the charts. A wonderfully exciting album, packing a punch as heavy as any of the many hits that were born of The Pretenders' stable over the years. A combination of new tracks and classic hits will ensure that the pretenders take to the stage. This will undoubtedly be one of the most exciting performances of the summer. 
in 2005, the Pretenders were inducted to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is only one of the many accolades they have received during their illustrious career, illustrious even, career. Scottish star Katie Tunstall will also be joining the Simple Minds and the Pretenders Grand Slam Summer Tour 2018 as a very special guest. Scotland-born KT Tunstall emerged with her 2004 classic debut, Eye to the Telescope, spawning such international hits as Black Horse and Suddenly I See, which won the Ivor Novello Award for Best Song in 2006. That same year, she won her first Brit Award for British Female Artist. Grand Slam 2018 will include a performance at Trent Park, Enfield, on Monday, 27th of August 2018. Full details are available from www.simpleminds.com. Enfield Market Christmas Grotto. Meet Santa and his elves in Enfield, Enfield Market's Christmas Grotto. Bring along your letter to Santa and send it to the North Pole with our special reindeer postal service. Take a seat in Santa's sleigh to discuss your wish list and receive a present. The perfect photo opportunity. Free festive Santa letters can be picked up from Enfield Market on Saturdays throughout December. This community event is brought to Enfield Market by the Old Enfield Charitable Trust. Santa's Grotto visit is only one pound and every child receives a present. The dates for them is Thursday the 14th to Saturday the 16th and Thursday the 21st to Saturday the 23rd of December, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tickets, as I said earlier, is one pound payable on the door and it is at Enfield Marketplace, Church Street, Enfield, E-N-2-6-N-L. Okay, so this next is quite a long and very detailed um, article, really, promoting local NHS services, opening times during the Christmas and New Year period. But some of the information here is so important that um, it's worth keeping past the the, uh, holiday season in any case. And it begins by letting us all know that when we have less than an emergency, we should call the NHS number um, helpline on 111 which is different to the urgent healthcare and emergency line, which is 999. And then it explains the difference. NHS 111, you can call this number when you need medical help fast, but it's not a 999 emergency. NHS 111 is a fast and easy way to get the right help and is available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Calls are free from landlines and mobile phones. Call 111 if you need GP out-of-hours services, urgent care, or you need information about a health issue. So that's NHS 111. NHS Choices is a national NHS website that provides health information and can help you find all the health services near to you. And you can find all of that information on www.nhs.uk. Now, if you're looking for a pharmacy over the holiday period, your local pharmacist can give you friendly expert advice about over-the-counter medicines that can help with lots of common conditions about the need for an appointment. Sorry, without the need for an appointment. Other services include smoking cessation and the minor ailment scheme. Your primary care access service. Now, if you are registered with a GP practice in Enfield or resident in Enfield but have yet to register with an Enfield GP practice, you can book an appointment with a GP or other healthcare professional on weekday evenings, weekends and bank holidays, including Christmas Day, Boxing Day and New Year's Day. And you can do this at the new primary care access hub located in Evergreen Primary Care Centre. And that's at 1 Smythe Close, Edmonton, N9 OTW. Urgent and routine appointments, either same day or pre-bookable, are available from 6.30 to 8pm, Monday to Friday, and 8am to 8pm, weekends and bank holidays. 
So that's really useful information there for everybody, really. Booking is easy. Either contact your GP practice in the usual way and ask for a weekday evening or weekend appointment or call the primary care access hub direct. And this is a very important number. The primary uh, care access hub direct on 030 00 I'll say that again. That's 030 00 3366 For dental care, in an emergency, call your own dentist for an appointment. But when the practice is closed, please call NHS 111. Walk-in services and urgent care centres. These centres treat most injuries and illnesses that are urgent but not life-threatening. You don't need to book an appointment. Just turn up and you will be seen promptly by either a doctor or a nurse. And that's at Chase Farm Urgent Care Centre at Chase Farm Hospital in Enfield. And that's open from 8am to 10pm every day. There's also the Edmonton Walk-in Centre at the Evergreen Primary Care Centre in One Smythe Close in Edmonton, which is open weekends and bank holidays only from 8am to 8pm. And then the North Middlesex Urgent Care Centre at North Middlesex Hospital in uh, Edmonton, N18, is situated at the A&E and is open 24 hours a day, every day. For mental health in a mental health crisis, please call 020 8702. 3800. Accident and emergency for life threatening illnesses or injuries, go to A&E or call 999. A&E and 999 should only be used in a critical or life threatening situation. And that is at North Middlesex University Hospital in Edmonton and Barnet Hospital in Barnet. And here are a few articles of local sport news. Firstly, some football. Borough make the most of rivals' postponed games. A 3-0 victory over St Neots Town reserves ensured Enfield Borough capitalised on the weather-enforced inactivity of their Spartan South Midlands League Division 1 rivals to move up two places to second in the table. With the other teams in the top four all having their games postponed, Borough took full advantage of their Saturday afternoon off to play one of their matches in hand over their title rivals. There were two changes in Enfield's defence from the midweek 4-1 win over Langford, with Trechi Bambi and Lenny Libacci replacing the unavailable Sidi Bayo and Brian Sheban, and in the starting eleven at the Queen Elizabeth Stadium. When the teams met in Cambridgeshire five weeks previously, Borough were quickly out of the blocks and 4-0 ahead inside 16 minutes en route to sealing a 6-1 victory. The visitors were much more organised on this occasion and adopted a similar approach to that of Langford, giving Borough little time on the ball to settle into their normal fluent passing game. Chances were at a premium, with St Neot's only shot on target being the entire match coming from three minutes when keeper Elgi Fedjko fielded a weak shot from 25 yards. Borough's sole goal-bound effort in the opening half came six minutes later when Taj Kennedy played the ball through to Richard Ennin, whose shot was palmed around the post by the St Neons keeper. Kennedy was involved in the vast majority of the chances the host created, combining well with his fellow forwards, but none of them troubled the keeper. The deadlock was eventually broken five minutes after the interval when a foul on Solomon Bumbucky resulted in the free kick. Jeremiah Plenty Lawrence delivered the ball into the heart of the penalty area when Ubaki met firmly with his head to meet the breakthrough. It was the same combination who doubled the lead seven minutes later when Lawrence took advantage of the fortunate ricochet, ran to the byline and his low cross was prodded home by Niwabake. Enfield went in search of more goals, turning provided with a low centre which Enin lofted over the bar. Thomas Opuk worked some space for himself inside the box before shooting across the face of the goal. The final goal of the game was scored in the 78th minute when Alfie Hatch's pinpoint through ball set Emin free, getting to the ball ahead of the keeper. Emin poked the ball goalwards and Opoku was on the hand to apply the finishing touch inches from the goal line. 
Borough now face a difficult run of three away matches in the space of eight days before Christmas, starting with a visit to FC Broxbourne Borough on Saturday, following two days later by a trip to Haringey to play Brimstown. Enfield Town were waiting on the outcome of a pitch inspection as the Enfield Independent went to press this week, so to find out if last night's home clash with Burgess Hill Town could go ahead. The Towners' trip to Lowestoft Town on Saturday unfortunately fell victim to the weather. Teenagers become first from Premier League club to take gold awards. Nine teenagers have become the first from a Premier Club Premier League football club to win uh, gold Duke of Edinburgh awards. On the same night, the Tottenham Hotspur Foundation teenagers collected their accolades. A further 71 young adults gathered uh, at the Bernie Grant Arts Centre to be given their gold, silver or bronze achievements. Some of the teenagers who took part in the Duke of Edinburgh scheme performed for the audience at the Arts Centre. Tottenham Hotspur footballer Kyle Walker-Peters was a special guest at the presentation evening, handing out certificates. Kyle said it was a really enjoyable night and great to see young local people like myself being able to celebrate their fantastic achievements. There was some talent, talented performers and from hearing the presentations, it's clear a lot of hard work has gone into earning these awards. The Duke of Edinburgh Award offers young adults the opportunity to develop leadership, teamwork and organisational skills. Participants gain experience through volunteering and work towards set goals. Tottenham Hotspur Foundation has introduced around 300 young people to its Duke of Edinburgh programme over the last four years. It is one of the best non-school licence holders for the programme in London and is funded by players of the People, People's Postcode Lottery. Kieran Bryant, a community development officer at the Tottenham Hotspur Foundation, said, A huge congratulations to all the participants awarded on the night. They have, been, they have all been, credit, been a credit to themselves and their local community, from the bronze participants all the way up to the gold achievers, who have made history by being the first from a Premier League club. A big thank you to Bernie Grant Arts Centre for hosting the event. Our main delivery partner, Alexandra Park School, and the players of the People's Postcode Lottery for funding our delivery of the programme. And finally, Christmas services, in where the, the churches together in Southgate, Oakwood and, Co and Cockfosters are churches of different Christian traditions working together to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And I will say at this point that regardless of your faith, all these churches are welcome if you wish to visit. Um, in the first instance, I will just go through a list of those churches that are open the first one is Christ Church Cop Fosters. The second is Trinity Welsh Church. Third is Christ the King Cop Fosters. The fourth is St Thomas Oakwood. Fifth is Southgate Methodist Church. And the sixth is St Andrew's Southgate. Seventh is Christ Church in Southgate. I'm, I will go through the list of each one of them now and just advise you of what those days are. So in terms of date beginning the 17th of December, it would be at Christ Church in Cock Fosters, which is the Church of England, Chalk Lane, Cock Fosters, en 19 jq The associate vicar for that church is the Reverend James Knowles. Telephone number is 0208-449-0556. And the website is www.christchurchcockfosters.co.uk. Also on the 17th of December is... I beg your pardon. On the 17th of December is St Thomas Oakwood which is at Prince George Avenue, London, November 14, 4SN. The curate is Ben Vane. The telephone number is 020-8352-2536. The website being 
www.saint, that's S-T hyphen Tom's, T-O-M-S dot org dot U-K. The fifth, um, the next one is Southgate Methodist Church, which is situated at The Bourne in Southgate, London N14 6RS. The minister is the Reverend Julia Wittorska, telephone number being 020-8886-8067. St Andrew Southgate is a Church of England and that is address is at Chase Side, November 14 5 SH. The vicar is Father Edward Turner. Telephone number is 020-8886-7523. The uh, website is www.saint, that's S-T hyphen Andrews hyphen Southgate dot co dot UK. And they are basically next to Asda on Chase side. And the final one for uh, Sunday the 17th of December is Christ Church in Southgate, which is also Church of England, and the address is Waterfall Road, The Green, Southgate, N147EG. This will be hosted by the Reverend Dr. Crichton Limbert, telephone number 020 Zero three eight four, and the website is www.christchurch-southgate.org. Now, in terms of the the second date, that is also um, being held by Christchurch at Southgate, and that is Friday, the twenty second of December. The previous ones that I've read out are all carol services. And as said before, you're welcome to attend. The third date on the uh, on the list is Sunday, the 24th of December, and the list of churches: Christ Church, Trinity Welsh, Christ the King, Saint Thomas, Southgate, Saint Andrews, and Christ Church in Southgate um, are all. With the exception, sorry, with the exception of Trinity Welsh, hosting a candlelight uh, carol service on the twenty fourth of December. Christmas Day is the last uh, date for services. They will be held at all of the churches um, that I've just listed. Um, and you are welcome to attend on all, at any one of those churches. Please pay, uh, take, pay good attention to the telephone numbers. So if you're unsure of what has just, I've just uh, stated, you can at least call any of those churches and um, just get those dates established. And I thank you very much for listening to me. Well, we have reached the end of our programme for this week. Thank you for listening. So, from the team of Roz, Ashley, Romany, Catherine and Dem on the controls, it's bye! bye. And bye. a special... We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now, please remember to turn over the address label on your postal packet, put the memory stick into the packet in the closed position and return it to us as soon as possible in readiness for the next edition. But it's not that quickly this time, so you've got some time. Don't forget you can call Diane de Jersey regarding any help you may require in connection with Enfield Talking Newspaper on 020 8805 6578. And now, Ali, John, Sonia and Philip present a special selection of Christmas readings, poems and jokes to keep you entertained over the holiday.
Our next edition will be on Thursday, the 11th of January, 2018. Hello. This is Ali, Sonia, John and Philip, and we're about to give you some Christmas entertainment. What goes ho, ho, whoosh, ho, ho, whoosh? Santa going through a revolving door. (laughs) What do you call Santa's little helpers? Subordinate clauses. Oh, very good. What did Santa say to the smoker? Please don't smoke. It's bad for my health. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Who is Santa Claus married to? Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> How long do a reindeer's legs have to be? Long enough so they can touch the ground. <laughs> oh. Why are Christmas trees so bad at sewing? Because they always drop their needles. <laughs> <laughs> What's worse than Rudolph with a runny nose? Frosty the snowman. With a hot flush. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus' Christmas Party by Nicholas Allen. There was nothing the innkeeper liked more than a good night's sleep. But that night, there was a knock at the door. No room, said the innkeeper. But we're tired and have travelled through night and day. There's only the stable round the back. Here's two blankets. Sign the register. So they signed it. Mary and Joseph. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed and went to sleep. But then, later, there was another knock at the door. Uh, Excuse me. I wonder if you could lend us another smaller blanket. (sighs) There, one smaller blanket, said the innkeeper. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed, and went to sleep. But then a bright light woke him up. That's all I need, said the innkeeper. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, drew the curtains, got into bed, and went to sleep. But then there was another knock at the door. We are three shepherds. Well, what's the matter? Lost your sheep? We've come to see Mary and Joseph. Round the back, said the innkeeper. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed and went to sleep. But then there was yet another knock at the door. Oh, we are three kings. Um, We've come... Round the back. He slammed the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed and went to sleep. But then a chorus of singing woke him up. Right, that does it. So he got out of bed, stomped downstairs, threw open the door, went round the back, stormed into the stable, and was just about to speak when... Shh! whispered everybody. You'll You'll wake wake the the baby. Baby, Baby, said the innkeeper. Yes, a baby has this night been born. Oh, said the innkeeper, looking crossly into the manger. And just at that moment, suddenly, amazingly, his anger seemed to fly away. Oh, said the innkeeper. Isn't he lovely? In fact, he thought he was so special, he woke up all the guests at the inn so that they could come and have a look at the baby too. So no one got much sleep that night. A Gift from the Stars by John Rice On Christmas Eve, on the first chime of midnight, the Christmas King and Queen of Christmas take the new moon, sharp as a blade, and slit the thin paper sky. They help each other wrap up the frosty stars in the night's dark blue wrapping paper. The Queen stretches out her sparkling hand and grasps a passing comet to use as a gift tag. The Queen of Christmas and the Christmas King then take their present on a long journey. They slide past the icy meteorites, they glide between the glassy suns, they slink in and out of cosmic clouds, they skim the outer edges of planets' rings, making their way through the caves and caverns of space to this shining earth. To this cold country, 
to this snowy town, to this still street, to this sleeping house, to this quiet bedroom, to this soft bed, and place their sky gift on your pillow. What do you tell Rudolph with lots of snow in his ears? Anything you want. He can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> what did Santa ask Rudolph about the weather? Is it going to rain, dear? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the turkey join the band? Because it had the drumsticks. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? Frostbite. <laughs> <laughs> How do snowmen get around? They ride an icicle. <laughs> <laughs> when is a boat just like snow? When it's adrift. Oh, very clever. <laughs> Why was the snowman rummaging in a bag of carrots? He was picking his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas at the Cratchits from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Such a bustle ensued that you might have thought a goose the rarest of all birds, a feathered phenomenon to which a black swan was a matter of course, and, in truth, it was something very like it in that house. Mrs Cratchit made the gravy, ready beforehand in a little saucepan, hissing hot. Master Peter mashed the potatoes with incredible vigour. Miss Belinda sweetened up the apple sauce. Martha dusted the hot plates. Bob took Tiny Tim beside him in a tiny corner at the table. The two young Cratchits set chairs for everybody, not forgetting themselves, and, mounting guard upon their posts, crammed spoons into their mouths, lest they should shriek for goose before their turn came to be helped. At last the dishes were set on, and grace was said. It was succeeded by a breathless pause, as Mrs Cratchit, looking slowly all along the carving knife, prepared to plunge it into the breast. But when she did, and when the long-expected gush of stuffing issued forth, one murmur of delight arose all around the board, and even Tiny Tim, excited by the two young Cratchits, beat on the table with the handle of his knife, and feebly cried, Hurrah! There never was such a goose. Bob said he didn't believe there ever was such a goose cooked. Its tenderness and flavour size and cheapness were the themes of universal admiration. Eked out by apple sauce and mashed potatoes, it was a sufficient dinner for the whole family. Indeed, as Mrs Cratchit said with great delight, surveying one small atom of a bone upon the dish, they hadn't ate it all at last. Yet everyone had had enough, and the youngest Cratchits in particular were steeped in sage and onion to the eyebrows. But now the plates being changed by Miss Belinda, Mrs Cratchit left the room alone, too nervous to bear witnesses, to take the pudding up and bring it in. Suppose it should not be done enough. Suppose it should break in turning out. Suppose somebody should have got over the wall of the backyard and stolen it while they were merry with the goose, a supposition at which the two young Cratchits became livid. All sorts of horrors were supposed. Hello! A great deal of steam. The pudding was out of the copper. A smell like a washing day. That was the cloth. A smell like an eating house. And a pastry cook's next door to each other. With a laundress's next door to that. That was the pudding. In half a minute, Mrs Cratchit entered. Flushed, but smiling proudly with the pudding like a speckled cannonball, so hard and firm, blazing in half of half a quartern of ignited brandy, and bedight with Christmas holly, stuck into the top. Oh, a wonderful pudding, Bob Cratchit said, and calmly, too, that he regarded it as the greatest success achieved by Mrs Cratchit since their marriage. Mrs Cratchit said that now the weight was off her mind, she would confess she had her doubts about the quantity of flour. 
Everybody had something to say about it. But nobody said or thought it was at all a small pudding for a large family. It would have been flat heresy to do so. Any Cratchit would have blushed to hint at such a thing. At last, the dinner was all done. The cloth was cleared, the hearth swept and the fire made up. The compound in the jug being tasted and considered perfect, apples and oranges were put upon the table and a shovel full of chestnuts on the fire. Then all the Cratchit family drew round the hearth in what Bob Cratchit called a circle, meaning half a one, and at Bob Cratchit's elbow stood the family display of glass, two tumblers and a custard cup without a handle. These held the hot stuff from the jug, however, as well as golden goblets would have done, and Bob served it out with beaming looks while the chestnuts on the fire spluttered and cracked noisily. Then Bob proposed. A merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. Which all the family re-echoed. God bless us, everyone, said Tiny Tim, the last of all. Two Christmas Poems by Wendy Cope Bloody Christmas here again. Let us raise a loving cup, peace on earth, goodwill to men, and make them do the washing up. At Christmas, little children sing and merry bells jingle. The cold winter air makes our hands and faces tingle, and happy families go to church and cheerily they mingle. And the whole business is unbelievably dreadful if you're single. How does King Wenceslas like his pizzas? One that's deep pan, crisp and even. Very good. (laughs) Yes. Who hides in the bakery at Christmas? A mince spy. (laughs) How many letters are in the angelic alphabet? 25. The Christmas alphabet has no L. Very good. (laughs) What carol is heard in the desert? O camel, ye faithful. (laughs) (laughs) What is the best Christmas present in the world? A broken drum. You can't beat it. (laughs) (laughs) What athlete is warmest in winter? A long jumper. (laughs) What's the most popular Christmas wine? But I don't like Brussels sprouts. (laughs) (laughs) A section from Dylan Thomas's A Child's Christmas in Wales. Years and years ago, when I was a boy, when there were wolves in Wales and birds the colour of red flannel petticoats whisked past the harp-shaped hills, when we sang and wallowed all night and day in caves that smelt like Sunday afternoons in damp front farmhouse parlours, and we chased, with the jawbones of deacons, the English and the bears, before the motor car, before the wheel, before the duchess-faced horse, when we rode the daft and happy hills bareback, it snowed and it snowed. But here a small boy says, It snowed last year too. I made a snowman, and my brother knocked it down, and I knocked my brother down, and then we had tea. But that was not the same snow, I say. Our snow was not only shaken from whitewashed buckets down the sky, it came shawling out of the ground and swam and drifted out of the arms and hands and bodies of the trees. Snow grew overnight on the roofs of the houses like a pure and grandfather moss, minutely ivied the walls and settled on the postman opening the gate like a dumb, numb thunderstorm of white, torn Christmas cards. Were there postmen then, too? With sprinkling eyes and wind-cherried noses on spread, frozen feet they crunched up to the doors and mittened on them manfully. But all that the children could hear was a ringing of bells. You mean that the postman went rat-a-tat-tat And the doors rang. I mean that the bells the children could hear were inside them. 
I only hear thunder sometimes, never bells. There were church bells too. Inside them? No, no, no. In the bat-black, snow-white belfries, tugged by bishops and storks. And they rang their tidings over the bandaged town, over the frozen foam of the powder and ice-cream hills, over the crackling sea. It seemed that all the churches boomed for joy under my window, and the weathercocks crew for Christmas on our fence. Get back to the postman. They were just ordinary postmen, fond of walking and dogs and Christmas and the snow. They knocked on the doors with blue knuckles. Ours has got a black knocker. And then they stood on the white welcome mat in the little drifted porches and huffed and puffed, making ghosts with their breath and jogged from foot to foot like small boys wanting to go out. And then the presents? And then the presents after the Christmas box. And the cold postman, with a rose on his button nose, tingled down the tea tray slithered run of the chilly glinting hill. He went in his ice-bound boots like a man on fishmonger's slabs. He wagged his bag like a frozen camel's hump, dizzily turning the corner on one foot, and by God he was gone. Get back to the presents. There were the useful presents, engulfing mufflers of the old coach days and mittens made for giant sloths, zebra scarves of a substance like silky gum that could be tug of war down to the galoshes, Blinding tam shanters like patchwork tea cosies and bunny-suited busbies and balaclavas for victims of head-shrinking tribes. From aunts who always wore wool next to the skin, there were moustached and rasping vests that made you wonder why the aunts had any skin left at all. And once I had a little crotchetted nose bag from, my, from an aunt, now, alas, no longer whinnying with us, and pictureless books in which small boys though warned with quotations not to, would skate on Farmer Giles's pond, and did, and drowned, and books that told me everything about the wasp, except why. Go on to the useless presents. Bags of moist and many-coloured jelly babies, and a folded flag, and a false nose, and a tram conductor's cap, and a machine that punched tickets and rang a bell. Never a catapult. Once, by mistake that no one could explain, a little hatchet. And a celluloid duck that made, when you pressed it, a most unduck-like sound. A mewing moo that an ambitious cat might make who wished to be a cow. And a painting book in which I could make the grass, the trees, the sea and the animals any colour I pleased. And still the dazzling sky-blue sheep are grazing in the red field under the rainbow build and pea-green birds. Hard-boilds, toffee, fudge and all sorts, crunches, cracknels, humbugs, glaciers, marzipan and butter Welsh for the Welsh. And troops of bright tin soldiers who, if they could not fight, could always run. And snakes and families and happy ladders and easy hobby games for little engineers, complete with instructions. Oh, easy for Leonardo. And a whistle to make the dogs bark to wake up the old man next door, to make him beat on the wall with his stick to shake our picture off the wall. And a packet of cigarettes. You put one in your mouth and you stood at the corner of the street and you waited for hours, in vain, for an old lady to scold you for smoking a cigarette. And then, with a smirk, you ate it. And then it was breakfast under the balloons. And now... I have a recipe for you for whiskey Christmas cake. Listen carefully, you will need the following. One cup of water. i just pour the water out. That's it. Uh, One cup of sugar, that's here. Four large brown eggs, careful. Two cups of dried fruit. One teaspoon of salt, one cup of brown sugar, some lemon juice, nuts, oh, and one bottle of whiskey. Sample the whiskey to check for quality. Ah. 
Take a large bowl um, and check the whiskey again. <sighs> to be sure it's the highest quality, pour one level cup and drink. Oh, gosh, I've got to do it again. Repeat. Oh, God. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Throw on the electric mixer. Beat one cup of butter in a large, fluffy bowl. Uh. <coughs> Add one teaspoon of sugar. And... Beef again. Make sure the whiskey is still okay. I think I'll have another bit of that. Try another top. Set up the mixer, beat two legs and those in a bowl and chuck in the cup of dried fruit. Mix on the turner. If the fire drip gets stuck in the beat beaterers, fry it goose with a juice driver. Sample the whiskey to check for tonsicity. <laughs> oh, I can't read by a right. Oh, sample the... Oh, no, I've done that. Next, sift two cups of salt or something. Who cares? So the whiskey. Oh. Adds one table. No, spoon the sugar. Well, something. Whatever you can find. Grease the oven. Turn the cake tin to 350 degrees. Don't forget to beat off the turner. Oh, 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 oh. Throw the bowl out the window. Is that a whiskey again? I go to bed. Rather red wine. <laughs> it's very good, isn't it? <laughs> What's the best thing to put in a Christmas cake? Your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you find chilli beans? At the North Pole. Yes. <laughs> Why is everyone so thirsty at the North Pole? No well, no well. <laughs> Why don't penguins fly? Because they're not tall enough to be pilots. <laughs> what do you call a bunch of chess players bragging about their games in a hotel lobby? A chestnut boasting in an open foyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, this tur turkey tastes like an old sofa. Well, you asked for something with plenty of stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> a politically correct Christmas poem. Twas the night before Christmas, and Santa feels wrecked. How to live in a world that's politically correct? His workers no longer would answer to elves. Vertically challenged, they were calling themselves. And labour conditions at the North Pole were alleged by the Union to stifle the soul. Four reindeer had vanished without much propriety, released to the wilds by the Humane Society, and equal empl employment had made it quite clear that Santa had better not use just reindeer. So half of the reindeer were gone, and his wife, who suddenly said she'd had enough of this life, 
joined a self-helping group and left in a whiz, demanding from now on her title was Ms. And as for the gifts, he ne'er had a notion that making a choice would cause such commotion. Nothing of leather, nothing of fur, which meant nothing for him and nothing for her. Nothing that might be construed to pollute, nothing to aim and nothing to shoot, nothing that clamoured or made lots of noise, nothing just for girls or just for the boys, nothing that claimed to be gender-specific, nothing that's warlike and so non-Pacific. You tried to be merry, tried to be gay, but you've got to be careful with that word today. His sack was quite empty, lay limp on the ground. No suitable gift for this year could be found. Something special was needed, a gift that he might give to all without angering the left or the right. A gift that would satisfy with no indecision each group of people and every religion, every ethnicity, each colour and hue, everyone everywhere, even to you. So here is that gift, its price beyond worth. May you and your loved ones enjoy peace on earth. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and, and a Happy, happy New, New Year! Year.